Hello and welcome to another What's Inside. This time we're looking at Zombicide 2nd Edition. This was copyrighted in 2020 by Cool Mini or Not. 1 to 6 players, ages 14 and up, takes about an hour to play. If you do it right, it takes a lot longer. And it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. This is a big box. Inside we got 88 minis, 12 survivors, 40 walkers, 16 fatties, 16 runners, 4 abominations, 6 survivor colored bases, 6 survivor dashboards, which is a nice upgrade, 12 survivor ID cards, 107 mini cards, 63 equipment cards, 40 zombie cards, 4 abomination cards, 9 double sided game tiles, 6 dice, 48 trackers, 71 tokens, and a rule book. Like I said, this is just 14 and up, mostly because of the horror elements and the complicated gameplay. But let's open this up, see what we've got. This is going to be a long video, buckle in. It's going to be worth it. They've fixed some rules in this to make it a little bit more playable, thankfully. I want to thank a buddy of mine, Wyatt, for letting me open his copy of the games and all the Kickstarter extras. And I left my speaker on, apparently. The box has got some really cool art, like usual. So, pretty standard stuff there. Alright, we've got a uh, free cool mini or not content with the little code thing there don't care all right rules and missions look at the size of that that's awesome beautiful artwork really well done layouts ah paper quality is pretty good actually there's a nice index in here even and a quick use game summary thing in the back. Alright, then we got our box here. This is our minis, I think. Alright, here's our tiles. And these are just cardboard pieces to kind of hold everything in place. We got our markers and our tiles in this set, so we'll look at these first because then I don't have to adjust the camera a bunch of times because I'm lazy. Alright, we got a bunch of noise tokens. Two, four, six, looks like 18 of those. Then we've got the, what look like medical crates and some supply crates which are really nice actually good look to them nice thickness on the cardstock like you'd expect and you'll notice these are all red on this side but when we flip them over we've got a green and a blue for objective markers too which is really cool so that's pretty sweet let's get that one out of the way and here we've got some police cars we got our zombie entrances and an exit, a first player token. And I think these are barriers of some kind of doors, it looks like. Yeah, they got handles on them, so they're doors. On the back, we got hoopties. And we've got destroyed doors. Usual sort of stuff that you get. All right, the tiles on here are actually really cool. There's some nice changes, like you've got like little bodega and carry out type stuff. But the lighting looks really cool with like light shining into different rooms, it creates an eerie, ominous feel. This is one V and one R, so one R here. One V here. I'm trying to avoid the glare, but that's not always easy. We got two R. And 
and 2b. I'm surprised there wasn't a plebis game in here, but it's pinball, so I guess there's that. So this is 3R and 3B. Like I said, cardstock's really good. I like the new layout designs in the for the rooms. It adds a lot to it. And here's a little diner on four. Toxic Waste Barrel is a nice touch. You get usual kind of trash looking stuff, but the graffiti's cool, Zombie Hunter, you know, pretty nicely done. That's a big couch for such a small room. Not really my type of feng shui, but you know, it's each their own. So this is 5R, and then flip it over to 5V. Pretty nice. So this, there are some doors on here already, but obviously other ones are for, for scenarios. Here's 6R. And 6V. I think some of these rooms have real potential because you could probably combine these with the previous maps and really come up with some cool stuff on your own. Like an Indian food uh, place, that's kind of cool. Here's number 8R. of course and then nine they should put Vespas in the next expansion and segways scooters all the cool little stuff that would add a lot of silly fun to it so I like the new map pieces they're really good they got nice look to them Thickness is maintained throughout all of them. I like that. I think that really adds quite a bit to it. So next we're going to look at the internal components here. And we've got quite a few. We've got our survivor cards. We've got our dashboards. We've got our minis. We've got a big stack of equipment and zombie cards. And all these little things. So let me adjust the camera and we'll take a closer look at all of this stuff. Okay, so here we have the dashboard. Now, if you're picking this up used, you want to make sure that the tab is still attached to the dashboards. Because that is a piece that you do need to worry about. And to make sure that it is fairly snug on here and it doesn't just fly all over the place. So this is how you gauge your experience and whatnot. You just slide it around. Pretty straightforward, it's 0 through 43. You of course start at 0. And you've got holes for pegs. Your character card would go in the center here. And they did put some little divots in so it's easier to get the card out. And then you get your equipment space. Unlike the Black Plague ones, there's no inventory section. They had little slots for inventory. So these are slightly smaller. You can put those up here now in these little slits. But you know it's gonna be a personal preference thing so I think these are big improvement over the big stupid cards they had before and having them more compact like this is a much better option and it looks really cool too so it even says zombie side on it you've got little fists and you got little pegs and everything for these so the dice are just six black six sided dice it's they're not anything special you can buy the zombie side specific dice where I believe the one is replaced with a zombie skull 
But these are just regular D6s. Pretty standard stuff. They remind me of the old Mage Knight dice. They're a little light, but not bad. Not bad for what you're doing with them. And then these are the character rings. You've got six of these. And they come in yellow, red, blue, light green, this orange tangerine color, and purple. The blue is a dark blue. There is a lighter one that they had with the other ones. And these are actually hard plastic. Some games give you the soft plastic rings. But these are actually hard plastic. So these of course go on the basis for the survivor that you play. So you know who's what character. Like purple is, I don't know, Wanda. And uh, so you know who's playing who. And once you establish what color you are, you then take the appropriate colored pegs out of here. These are slightly different than the previous ones. If I can get the plastic bag to open. And that these have actual hexagonal shapes now instead of just regular pins. And they have slats in them so it's easier to grip them. That was a complaint some people had about pulling these out of the boards. Is that getting a hold of these the old ones is a little more difficult. So these have a little bit more of a unique look to them. They don't look just like you're playing Battleship. So you just take your corresponding pegs with your base. And you get a pretty significant amount of them. It's like eight of each color, roughly. There's also some of the spare sliders for the dashboard or in the bag. So you get a couple of extras of these in case you break one off. That is really, really nice touch. All right, let's take a look at the cards and the minis. Right, let's take a look at these character cards first. These are your survivors. Let's see what we've got here. If I can get this open. That is one of the downsides with these is they really seal these cards quite well. All right, so first up we have Amy. Ooh, these are real nice. Real nice thickness, good coating on them too. So we've got Amy, and then she's got three health points. I think all the main characters here do. Oh no, there's some kids that have two. So on the back, it's got a little brief description of her special ability, which is really, really cool. Then we've got Doug, who's eerily reminiscent of Michael Douglas in Falling Down. The art's good on these. The layout's real clean. You can read everything on the card. I like these quite a bit. This is a definite step up from the previous edition. Massive step up. Just on the physical quality of it and the way everything's laid out. And they definitely took the good parts of Black Plague and added it to this. So I'm real surprised they did a second edition. I didn't think they would. We have Ellie. Next up we have Josh. Then we have Ned. And we have Wanda. Now we're into the kids. We've got Bunny G. Then 
Then we have Lily. Then Lou. Next up, we have Odin. Then we have Ostara, something like that. I don't know. And lastly, Tiger Sam. Now, it probably will be a little controversial to include the kids in this, but whatever. It, it's probably just done to be edgy. Alright, that's our character cards. Let's take a look at some of the minis before we get into the other cards. We'll just kind of briefly go over the minis because there's not a lot of detailing I'm going to be able to capture with the camera. Alright, so the detailing is pretty solid on here. We've got good vinyl. Uh, here's number one. Which looks good with the sword. I do always worry a little bit about breaking these off, but they seem very sturdy, but I'd still worry about bending it, that sort of thing. So we'll take a quick look at all our survivors and then an example of the uh, zombies. So here's Doug. The detail work on here is really good. You can see he's number six. Usually they put like logos or something on the bottom, but this is pretty simple molding numbers. I'm not sure why he has a hockey mask on his bag, but you know, whatever. Painting some of these is going to be a little bit of a challenge, especially the ones with the signs on them. Like his sign says human. And that could be a real problem to paint. This guy's got so many intricate things on him that that would present a challenge for many painters, especially people like me who aren't good at painting. And of course the perfectionists will want to get all the little detailing and nooks and crannies. So that could be a bit of an issue. Here's Wanda with her sweet roller skates. I always thought she was a knockoff of Lollipop Chainsaw, but maybe not. I don't know. That was a cheerleader, not a waitress. Here's Bunny G. The kid minis are significantly shorter than the adult ones too. So there's not a lot of room for mistaking those. But they always do a good job on the minis for this game. Here's number 23. Here's the 
kid in the parka, which probably get warm. This is the last of our survivors. It's number 25. Alright, let's look at some abominations. These are all pretty unique looking. I wish I could make that focus manually. big piece sticking out of him is really cool looking it's a nice touch but again I'd be worried about breaking that off I'm really excited to play this. Hopefully I'll get to play it soon. But the rules look like they have been cleaned up. Quite a bit. And uh, hopefully they copied a lot more from uh, Black Plague. So I really like that game. The touches with the like moving clothes and stuff is really good. They've gotten really good with making minis these days. Alright, let's look at some zombies. Alright, here's a runner. Here's a different runner. This one has a, uh, was that like a hood? Then we've got a regular shambling walker type. I think this is actually another runner, but I'm not positive. He's got one leg up that seems to indicate motion plus Everybody else in this section of the plastic tray is a runner, so hard to tell. I'd have to look at the instruction book look more closely than I am. Here's another runner that is uh, a little bit screwed up looking in the face. Y'all like that? Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to look that way. You get four of each of these guys. Only one of each, each abomination is unique, same with the survivors. But each of these runners, there's four of. And they're in that top tray section. So you get a pretty good amount of these guys. Alright, let's look at the other tray of minis. Before we get into the rest of the minis, one cool thing that needs to be pointed out about this insert box is that on the inside it shows you where everything goes and how to stack the packaging up so if you want to re use these for holding your minis it actually shows you where everything goes in the box I think that is a fantastic addition but let's get into the minis we got four of each of these we'll start with the fatties these uh, are a little darker of color of miniature I don't know if it was just different plastic type or something like that probably because they're a little thicker looking
So that's the fatties. Four different kinds, you get four of each. Now the regular zombies, you get four of these as well. And there are, looks like 10 different ones. And there were additional ones that you could pick up on Kickstarter. That were really cool looking. Uh, unique figures, that sort of thing. The guy with the inflatable ducky was my favorite. And lastly, we've got to get up to sandwich board saying the end is nigh. Which is really cool, but that's going to be a bit of a difficult paint job, I think, to actually get the letters raised up. That's going to take a level of expertise well beyond my spray painting ability. So that's about all the more detailing I ever get. But yeah, this is the last of the minis we're going to look at. But yeah, real nice looking pieces. The minis are real impressive. It's kind of hard to do anything new with zombies because it's kind of generic. You know, they could have got real lazy with them, but they actually have different designs. And they look really good. The detailing is really, really well done, which kind of surprised me. Uh, I didn't expect they would be able to do the detailing quite so well as they did. But, you know, these things tend to be impressive when they're from cool mini or not. I'm real happy with those. So let's take a look at the big stack of cards. And then we'll wrap it up. Alright, let's take a look at our card pack. Should be pretty cool. There's several different types of cards in here. We'll sort these out and do them one stack at a time. First up, let's do our Abomination cards. Very distinct back, it says Abomination on it. And we've got four of these. You got your Patient Zero. You got your hobo manation. You got your abomina wild. And then you've got your abomina cop. Alright, special rule for each one. Pretty straightforward. Get those out of the way. Then we'll take a look at our regular activation decks here. And see what we've got. The back on this looks really good. So that's pretty cool. Oops. There appears to be a duck outside. Extra activation. The cards are numbered. This is card 40. And they appear to be going in descending order. So it's nice they numbered them.
card quality is really nice. The art is beautifully done. I like that. I believe they make sleeves for these too, so you probably want to consider that as an option to uh, keep them from getting too damaged. heavy hitters right away here. I thought there would be more walker cards, but there really aren't. And lastly, Alright, so those cards look pretty good. Pretty standard stuff. Let's get those out of the way. And then we've got our equipment cards. The gray back. Gray and black. Now there are three different decks. You've got your gray your red and then your blue so we'll start with the gray ones here we got a pistol I believe this is starter equipment second pistol third pistol fire axe crowbar and a baseball bat not bad let's take a look at our red deck we have a something I can't pronounce without making myself look dumber than usual and we've got a nail bat we've got my shotgun with a machete attachment seems a little impractical gun blade golden kirky kirkry so i don't know golden ak-47 evil twins automatic shotgun army sniper rifle arg Another ARG. Alright, let's look at blue. First up, we have water. Another water. Sub MG. Second one. Sniper rifle. Second one, shotgun, second shotgun, sawed off, second sawed off, third sawed off, fourth one, plenty of shells, plenty of shells, third one, plenty of bullets, Second one, third one, we got a pistol, Maltov, Maltov, third Maltov, fourth, machete, another one, third one, fourth one, Kukri, Second one, Katana. Second one, Flashlight. Second flashlight, Fire Axe. Crowbar. Chainsaw. 
Another chainsaw. Canned food. Second canned food. Bag of rice. Another bag of rice. Ah! Second one. Third one. And finally, fourth one. Alright. The only other remaining card is the police car and on the back of this is the pimp mobile and that's just if you're driving one of those around makes it easier for reference all right the miniatures look really good the cards are excellent quality with solid art well designed the weapons are all familiar of course to people that played the first edition but it looks like they tightened up the rules and made the cards smaller without having to use a little paperclip thing that tore up the cards real bad. The dashboards are a huge improvement. And it looks like the rules have been tightened up to eliminate a lot of the complaints people had about the first edition. And I think this looks really good. It looks like a little bit of a hybrid between the original and uh, Black Plague. So I think it's going to work out really well. I'm excited to give it a shot and see what it looks like when you're actually playing. But this is a really big box that's really nice and heavy. You're getting your money's worth with this. And I think Cool Mini or Not is a pretty solid company most of the time. And the zombie side stuff has been really enjoyable to play. So we've seen what's in the box. You've heard my take on it. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future unboxings and reviews. If you want to help the channel out in other ways, you can share the video around on your social media, buy yourself something nice from the Teespring store, or support me monthly on Patreon so you get access to toy videos that I do and the occasional comic book review that I do exclusively for patrons. Or you can support me through Streamlabs with a one-time do donation through PayPal. Either way, hopefully we will see you on the next one.